we've come to expect a great deal from our leaders. And the theory, or rather what I like to say, the myth is that all of our leaders need to be great in all of the four areas that I'm going to talk about, such as the ability to build a compelling vision of where we need to go as a company, to have the intellectual capacity to make very complex decisions around working out where we are in the market today and where we need to go, the relationships and the relationship skills around building great relationships internally within our business and with our customers. And finally, the operational skills and discipline to execute on that whole complex business strategy that we have. Well, the truth is that our brains aren't wired to be able to perform at an exceptional level in all of those areas. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, the myth of the complete leader. We had a boss who was a nice guy, but he thought he was highly skilled in all four areas of leadership that I've spoken about already. And um, two of the areas he was really good at was the visioning, developing a compelling vision of where we needed to go, and the relationships, more so with our customers than with us. He at times got a bit frustrated with us. But the two areas he wasn't particularly good at was the operational and execution areas and then the sense making this where are we in the market today and over time it became a problem for the business our results started to drop so profit was decreased as a direct result our customers gave us feedback that we weren't executing in a timely manner and people in the team became unhappy uh, and started to leave the team so as a group, we decided to give some direct feedback. Now, the important thing with feedback is you give the positive feedback first. So we gave feedback around the two areas we thought he was very highly skilled in, and he appreciated that. We then asked him about our results as a team. And over dinner one night, we talked about what we thought we needed to do as a business to improve the results. We then started talking about how we thought we could take certain responsibilities off him around those two areas that we thought he was struggling in. And to his credit, he realised, without us being so blunt, I guess, that we could help him and the team achieve more. So we brought in an analyst that was highly skilled in the sense-making part of the business, and one of us took on the role of operations officer, execution and details. Now, the great thing was over time, he became less of a workaholic. He let us attend meetings that in the past he would have to go to every single meeting, which meant he was traveling a lot. And he became a more gentle and more mindful person. So our business results were impacted with greater profit. People were happier in the job, which made them work better. And more people wanted to come to our team. So he wasn't the complete leader, he was an incomplete leader, and he used the team and other people to help build the area of those skills across the business. Our customers were happier, he got promoted, and we as staff were more happy in the business. So, if you think you're a complete leader, think again, go and get feedback from people throughout the business and your customers, and don't be scared to admit where you need help and bring your talented people in to help you because that's what they want to do and as a leader you'll shine if you do that.